sure that we're focused around issues in the construction sector particularly. Question number two, the Honourable Judith Collins. Thank you, Mr Speaker. To the Minister of Housing and Urban Development. Does he stand by all his statements regarding the Crown's potential risk in relation to the insolvency of Kiwi Build developers? Mr. Uh, the Speaker, Jenny Sully, sir. on behalf of the Minister for Housing and Urban Development, yes, in the context they were made. When he announced five weeks ago that 1,200 new state Kiwi Build and market houses were being built on the Housing New Zealand North Coast development, did he have confidence that the builders, Ebert Construction, would be in business five weeks later to continue working on the project? Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Minister of, Building, uh, of Housing and Urban Development, yes, I did. That was short-sighted. Does he still stand by his statement last week in the House in relation to Kiwi Build, quote, in the case of developer insolvency, the Crown carries no risk whatsoever, end quote. Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Minister for, for Housing and Urban Development, yes, in the buying of the plans initiative, the Crown underwrite is only triggered on completion. Therefore, there is no risk to the Crown in the event of a developer's insolvency. In some cases, there may be progress, progress payments, in which case liability is limited to the progress payments made. The Kiwi Build unit advises me. The Kiwi Build unit advises me, however, Mr. Speaker, that these contracts are rare and they have not entered into any so far. Anything. When he told his cabinet colleagues that there would be quote appropriate due diligence, end quote. What was the result of the due diligence for Ebert Construction that went into receivership this week? Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Minister of Housing and Urban Development, uh, I, I'm sorry. Sorry, I, I think, I think the, the member, the Minister can start the answer again. I, and can I ask, I, 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 if it was Ms Collins, can she finish her questions before she sits down? Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Minister of, Urban and, um, of Housing and Urban Development, uh, there was appropriate uh, work that was done in, in terms of the advice I've gotten from KiwiBuild. Uh, things are done in terms of risk management on a development-by-development -development basis. Because of the inherent differences, any individual development and the prices it might seek from the Crown to underwrite is taken on a case-by-case -case basis. I can give you, uh, Mr. Mr Speaker, the advice that I've, been that I've been given, which is how the risk is managed by the Q Build unit. First, an initial assessment is made. Second, short listing. A second review of the proposal. A workshop with de the developers. The Kiwi Build unit then evaluates the amended proposals. The opportunity to clarify any issues are done. An evaluation panel, and then the evaluation report the chair prepares. A final evaluation report, and then the contract is negotiated. In addition, Mr. Speaker, CBRE Colliers and Jasmax are contracted to provide independent expert advice to the Kiwi Build unit for each development. If as he said on the 26th of March this year, that the Crown is sharing the risk with developers, then what responsibility will the Crown be taking to ensure that subcontractors and workers are paid on Kiwi Build sites when the developer goes broke and whether or not they can even get their tools off the site? Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Minister, uh, we've asked advice from the Ministry on how it is that subcontractors can get some of their tools back. Um, one of the things that they, uh, we've asked our Ministries to do is for uh, the Ministry to reach out to the receivers and to assist our subcontractors to get their tools back. Mr Speaker, we, have, we are waiting for further advice on this. Um, we would like our subcontracts to be paid and uh, there is uh, the, the, the Contracts uh, Act that was signed, uh, Mr Speaker. All of those subcontractors that had their contracts uh, signed before the 1st of July 2017 will get some payment in terms of the labour that they provided. Which 
of his statements is correct, that the Crown will be sharing the risk with developers, as stated on the 26th of March, or when he told the House on Wednesday last week that the Crown will take no risk whatsoever if a developer becomes insolvent during the Kiwi build process. Mr Speaker, further to my answer earlier on about uh, insolvency, Mr Speaker, um, the Crown only underwrite, uh, the, the Crown underwrite is only triggered on completion of houses. So the, the risk that the Crown takes is only in the event that a developer goes insolvent. Question number three, Jamie Lee Ross. Uh, Mr Speaker, my question is to the